Um, Division Roberts of X Fund. For the fifth of report of the third, who knows what that is? Okay, what do you know what it is, Michael? Well, it's four to the fifth times four to the negative third. So when you combine them, you just subtract four to the third from four to the fifth. Very nice. So what Michael said, so so what is that? So what do you get? What's the answer? Four sixteen. So four sixteen. Now. Okay, so what Michael said, one way he thought about this is he said I could rewrite this as 4 to the times 4 to the negative third, right? Which is equal to, now I add the exponents, which is 4 to the 2, which is 16. Another way to think about this is there's 4 5s on the top. 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 times 4, right? And how many, I mean, 5 4s, and how many 4s do I have on the bottom? 3 4 Four times, no, that just means there's four fours on the bottom. It doesn't mean there's negative three fours. It means right. there's three fours on the bottom. How many of those fours would cancel out? Three. Right? This goes away, this goes away, this goes away. Right? So what I end up with is four times four. So essentially what I did is I took the number of fours on the top and subtracted the number of fours on the bottom. And I end up with four to the four to the two power, which is six. So the formula is, if you have some letter A, this is the rule. A raised to the M over A raised to the N. That's equal to, that's an N, that's N, okay? That's equal to A raised to the M minus N, okay? So that's the rule you need to know. So for instance, say I add, 8 to the 5th over 8 to the 2nd. What would that be? Raise your hand and tell me. What would that be? Uh, go ahead, fire him. What would that be? Uh, would it be 8 to the power of 3? 8 to the power of 3, exactly. If I asked you to multiply, that would be good enough for that one because that's a pretty big number. 8 times 8 times 8, 64, is it 512, 64, it might be, it might be 512, we could figure it out, I don't know, but you can figure out what it is, it is 512. Now, what if instead of having numbers, I have letters, what if I have y to the 11th over y to the 3rd, what would that be? Okay, uh, Alex? Y to the 8. Y to the 8, very nice. <coughs> All right. What if I have, now it gets, it always gets. Getting tricky. It always gets, gets tricky, gets doesn't it? Tricky. Okay. So what if I had. Can you go back? Go back. So what if I had um, M to the second over M to the ninth? Who could tell me what that would be? Uh, Sam. M to the seventh. Oh, very nice. Okay, m to the negative seventh, which could be rewritten as what? One over m to the seventh. Nice. Okay, one over m to the seventh. So if I have a, if this number is negative, then I I just subtract. Same rules. Okay. And then if it's a negative exponent, I want to write it without a negative exponent, I put it one over and make it positive. All right? Um, what if I had... Is that negative seven right there? I'm negative seven. That's negative seven. Okay. Um, okay, let's try something else. What if I have something like here we go. Now it gets, it always gets more complicated, doesn't it? So what if I had m to the 2, n to the 4, over uh, m to the 5, m to the 5, n to the 3. Let me tell me what that is. Hey. Clean up. 
to the negative three. Yes. And n to the negative one. Uh, no, 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 just one. Just, just one. one. How can I simplify it? Can you take that a step further for me? No. no. Oh, I got this. Go ahead, Jordan. Got it. One over n to the third n. Nice. The n stays up top, OK? Oh, because it's pop, okay. Yeah, because it's all by itself. So n to the 1, you don't need to write a 1 up there. And he put the m to the 3 down there. Right? Yes. Very nice. OK. Yes, Byron. So whenever there's a negative, you also want the negative exponent to become positive? Yeah, when they say simplify, yeah, it's better to write it. Good question. Yeah? I mean, if you wrote it like this on a test, and it's a five-point question, I take out one point or something like that. If it's simplified completely, or I'll say right without any negative exponents or something like that. OK, um, here's one more tricky one. You get this one, you get a valuable price. Okay. <gasps> oh, wait, what's the value? The stakes are high. Oh, I got it. Stakes are high. I got it. <laughs> I got it. Too. I know what it is. A to the 5. B to the 2. No, you don't even know what the problem is. I yet. know what it is. Yeah, yeah, I know. Okay. You get a worm? What? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, what's the prize? So, that's the answer to that one. The prize is next rule is if you have a fraction to a power. And it's kind of, kind of the, I'm just going to give you the rule and tell what it says. So, A to the N. Oh, so a, a over b to the n is equal to, that's not a 9, that's an a. So that's, yeah, an a. No, b that's an a to the n over b to the n. So for instance, if I have like 2 thirds, I give you, these aren't the Tootsie Pop questions yet. Okay? So if I have 2 thirds raised to the 3 power, that means, okay? That means 2 to the 8th. I see all your hands, but I'm just going to do an example. I mean, not 2 to the 8th. 2 to the 3rd over 3 to the 3rd, which is equal to 8 to the 27th on the bottom. Okay? Because that's 2 times 2 times 2, and that's 3 times 3 times 3. Okay? Okay. So now, <coughs> I want to show you one more before I give you opportunities to earn the big coin. Okay? What? W to the 5 over 4, <laughs> W to 5 over 4 raised to the 3rd power, okay? What's that? What's, what would I do with these exponents? Multiply, so that's W to the 15 over 4 to the 3, okay? Which 4 to 3 isn't too bad, it's 64. Okay. Yeah. Yes. What if the uh, number outside of the parentheses is the I haven't got there yet. Okay. Then you just flip it over and make it. <coughs> you have some homework back actually? Still go. Yep. I'll show you. Okay. That's an excellent question. Okay. So here, you guys are going to try. Here's an easy one, okay, for you guys to attempt. Um, let's do. I'm running. I'm running low on Tootsie Pop, so and I'm not going to give you Tootsie Pops every single time you get the right answer because I, I can't afford it. Okay. Four over x squared. Four over x cubed squared. Simplify that answer completely. Simplify it completely. You gotta get it simplified completely. You gotta simplify it completely, Danny. Me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I have it. I have it. You already right. got it, prize, didn't you? No. No, he stole it. He stole it. And Alex stole it back for us. Okay, go ahead, Danny. So you did like four <laughs> squared over x to the sixth. Yep. And what is four squared? Uh, four squared is sixteen. Nice. And there you go. Yeah. Okay. Um, hold on. What color? Red. Red. There you go. All right. Okay. Um, this is like, this is like, um, never mind. All right. Next one.
So say I do this, I have A. So here's your next rule. A over B to the negative N, this is the last rule, okay? A over B to the negative N is equal to B over A to the positive N, okay? And that's the question I think Caitlin was asking before. So your desk down, please. Um, your chair down, three, what? Okay, so if you have a negative sign up here, so let me show you why this is true, okay? Three-fifths to the negative two powers, right? This, you don't have to write this down, but this is the same as one over three-fifths to the positive two power, right? Do you guys remember copy dot flip? So copy dot flip, okay? So what you end up doing, if this is a negative power, all you really are doing <coughs> is you flip it and you change that sign to positive. Okay, that's all you gotta remember. If the outside is negative, you just flip this fraction and you make that number outside positive. So say, for instance, that I have something like, um, here we go, here's our iron one. X, it's not that. X squared over Y raised to the negative five power. Who's gonna? Figure out that one for me. Sam, think about it before you raise your hand. Michael, I'll give you one because you can work. Go, go ahead. Um, think about it before you get to, Have you thought about it? A little bit. You know what the answer is? I know what it is. I know what it is. I know what it is. Get. I'm going to believe my political one. Let's, uh, let, let Jake try. First, you flip, it would do y over x power to the um, positive fifth power. Yes. And then you would um, multiply, so it would be 5 or y5 um, over x to the tenth power. You the man. Okay, nice job. What color do you get? Uh, oh, I have it's green and I pink. Green and cheese. Green? Yeah. Green. Hey. There you go. Open the intersection. Okay. Um, so, very nice. Okay, last, one more try. Here's a really, here's a toughie, okay? This is a, this is the bonus, bonus double reward problem. And, uh, no, here, so I'm gonna give you a time to think about this one after I write it down. So I'm gonna do three X, three X, no, that's wrong. Uh, 2x to the 6th over uh, y to the 4th, that whole thing raised to the negative 3 power. No, that's not me. So think about that one. My goal is exactly right. Okay? Flip it over. So I get y to the 4th over 2x to the 6th. Then I'm going to raise everything in there to the 3rd power. So this becomes y to the 12th, because I multiply those exponents. Oh. 2 to the 3rd, you can't forget to raise a 2 to the 3rd, that's 8. And x to the 6 times 3, which is 18. Very nice, Michael Miller. I got it. Yeah, man. All right. Um, so, that's...